He was betrayed and put on a prison, but he became the strongest mafia boss. Hibiki is an ugly disgusting loser who's addicted to the internet. Just like you, he never listens to his mother and spends his entire time playing games made for losers. But one day, he was demoted to Iron 4 while playing in an internet cafe. He got so mad, despite being trash, and went back home. He watched our Labyrinth Harim recap video and fell asleep. That night, Hibiki had a nightmare because he didn't like and subscribe. In that dream, his mother encouraged him to like and subscribe, as you should. However, Hibiki realizes it's too late because he's behind prison like bars, unable to do as his mother says. Awakening in a dimly lit room with three other confused boys, they try to figure out where they are. Hibiki believes he's in a video game, and gets excited, thinking there's a mission to complete. As the boys argue about their situation, four people called instructors led by Jean, the director of the academy, enter the room. Jean expresses dissatisfaction with the youth's lack of progress and introduces herself as the director of the Elite Re-Education Academy. This is an institution created by the government to treat teenagers with internet addiction, and whoever doesn't watch our videos. Outside, a group of worried boys watch as instructors use violence to correct one of them, even though the boys are exhausted from their training. The instructors are harsh, showing no mercy and aiming to assert dominance. Inside the rooms, one of the boys, along with Hibiki, questions Jean, suspecting they are not in a school but a rehabilitation center. The boy threatens violence, claiming to lead a guild of a hundred thousand men. But the head instructor, Cheyenne, beats him, making Hibiki realize this is not a game. Cheyenne instructs the boys to line up, emphasizing the only rule is to obey the director and him. After a roll call, Cheyenne reveals they'll be confined for a while at their mother's request. Hibiki, shocked, learns he'll be confined for a year due to severe addiction, and Cheyenne dismisses the possibility of calling his mother. Cheyenne accuses Hibiki of insulting Jean's looks, beating him when he denies it. Realizing he can't win fairly, Hibiki watches as the group is taken for initiation, enduring a cold water cleanse and changing into new uniforms. As Cheyenne explains the schedule, say, one of the new boys, falls, unable to walk due to injuries, resulting in another beating. Hibiki seizes the moment to escape, running to a nearby building. Climbing the stairs to the rooftop, he contemplates escaping before they kill him, reflecting on mistreating his mother. Frustrated, Hibiki reaches the roof, realizing there's no escape. Downstairs, a group of boys watches the arrival of Hibiki's group. They ask the instructor if they are the new arrivals, and he confirms it, entrusting the care of the newcomers to one of the boys named Wudo, stating that he is the head of the behavior committee. The boy promises to take care of the three new boys, inadvertently alerting the instructors that one of them escaped. Cheyenne checks and discovers that Hibiki is the one who escaped. Cheyenne orders his instructors to find Hibiki immediately. From the building's ledge, the protagonist watches the instructors coming to find him, contemplating his options as he doubts his survival in this place. Hibiki realizes that he would rather ice guy himself than endure whatever hell awaits him in this new reality. While considering jumping, a boy named Shin with purple hair interrupts him, asking what he's trying to do. Shin advises Hibiki to aim carefully if he intends to jump, expressing concern for the potential harm to a fellow student below. As Shin slowly approaches Hibiki, Hibiki threatens to jump if Shin comes any closer. As Hibiki steps back, nearly falling off the building, Shin grabs him by his clothes, saving him from falling, however, not pulling him to safety. Shin suggests that if Hibiki wants to jump, he should do it quickly and recommends aiming at the instructor who beat him, suggesting that if Hibiki will ice guy, he should take Cheyenne with him. Pushed to his limit, Hibiki regrets attempting to jump and asks to be saved. Shin offers to buy Hibiki's life in exchange for making him a real man. Initially suspicious, Hibiki believes the offer is indecent and questions Shin's gender, misunderstanding what Shin is trying to offer him. However, that misunderstanding gets resolved quickly after a little back and forth and a few punches from Shin to Hibiki. After, Shin hands Hibiki binoculars to investigate the courtyard and see the girls who are also at the academy to get re-educated. If Hibiki sees one, he will choose her, and Shin will help him fulfill his promise to make Hibiki a man. Looking through them, Hibiki discovers that Shiori, a girl he knows from middle school, is also at the academy, sparking Shin's curiosity. Shin declares that Shiori will be Hibiki's target, promising to make her his, before introducing himself to Hibiki as Hibiki's new master, Shin, the one who owns Hibiki's entire existence from then on. Shin leaves the rooftop, followed behind by Hibiki, and Shin presents Hibiki to the head instructor, Cheyenne, claiming he got lost looking for the bathroom. The instructor warns Shin that if he's lying, he'll be treated as an accomplice to what Hibiki did. Shin makes excuses for Hibiki which convinces Cheyenne that Hibiki wasn't trying to escape. Shin then explains that he chooses Hibiki as his dog from then on, prompting Cheyenne to instruct Shin to take care of Hibiki. Cheyenne and the other instructors leave the two boys alone, 
and Shin and Hibiki go about their way. Excited by Shin's power, Hibiki becomes relieved and starts to believe that Shin might help him fulfill his promise to Shiori. Shion, after leaving the two boys, arrives at the director's office to report what happened, revealing that Jean, the apparent director, is not actually in charge, someone called Hayo is. After a while, Hibiki joins the rest of the academy students with Shin in the courtyard. Shin approaches Wudo to discuss the situation he uncovered with a female student named Jun. Shin gives instructions of some sort to Wudo and walks back to Hibiki, telling him that something interesting is about to happen. Wudo follows Shin's orders and forcibly checks Jun under her clothes, seemingly searching for something, which makes her feel embarrassed. Concerned, Hibiki questions Shin if that was the order that was supposed to be interesting to which Shin replies that he just has to observe. Wudo discovers a hidden cell phone hidden away in Jun's plot, identifying her as a smuggler. When Jun tries to retrieve her phone, Wudo hits her to the ground, keeping her away from the phone while mocking her. Jun pleads for its return, emphasizing that she won't survive without it as it's the only way she communicates with her boyfriend. However, authorized by his disciplinary role, Wudo tears her shirt to search for more contraband that Jun may have hidden in her clothes. Hibiki watches this as it happens, feeling that what they are doing is wrong as he hears the desperate cries of the girl. He feels wrong for even watching but no one is standing up to this. Suddenly, Shiori, the student council president intervenes with a small knife that she keeps with herself, threatening to take Wudo's life for being a pervert. Wudo is surprised to see the student council president threatening him with death. He questions her desire to cover up for the girl, but she reminds him that he has no authority to impose punishments because that's left only to the instructors. Shiori demands that Wudo releases Jun. Subsequently, one of the boys decides to hit Shiori for trying to give orders to Wudo, but Shiori skillfully evades the attack and humiliates the boy in front of everyone. Another young man throws a stone at her from behind. Witnessing the situation, Hibiki decides to run and intercept the attack to protect Shiori. In doing so, Hibiki receives a blow to his face, further enraging Shiori who only wants the situation to de-escalate. Shiori then launches herself at the other boy who threw the rock, defeating him by striking him in his sensitive areas. Shin demands that Wudo retire peacefully, and although Wudo has no intention of doing so, they are interrupted by the arrival of the instructors, who disperse everyone to return to their rooms. Finally, Shiori carefully observes Hibiki and, recognizing him, asks him to follow her so they can check his injuries. Meanwhile, Hayo scolds Shion for causing so many problems because of one student that he can't seem to control, making him late for their meeting. At that time, the meeting had already finished, and Shion missed it. Hayo then indicates that instructor Ryo will provide details of the meeting that Shion arrived late to. Hayo also instructs Shion to pay close attention to the student who caused trouble, emphasizing that nothing should go wrong. Jean also tells Shion that he will be punished for the trouble that was caused by a student under his care. The scene shifts, and we move to where Shiori is treating Hibiki. Hibiki observes Shiori closely and is amazed by her beauty. Hibiki confesses that he found it fantastic how she confronted Wudo without showing fear, appearing like a heroine. Suddenly, Shiori notices that Hibiki is becoming excited and threatens him with her weapon for being a pervert. Hibiki tries to apologize for his excitement. Shiori then approaches Jun, who has been with them since. Shiori proposes a deal with Jun since she clearly rescued her from Wudo. The girl questions why Shiori asks for something in return for saving her, thinking she did it because she's the student council president who is supposed to be a good person. Despite the girl's pleas, Shiori asks Jun to try to smuggle in another cell phone since she also needs one, promising to teach her to use a knife to defend herself. Additionally, Shiori thinks that the knife will come in handy when Jun needs to use it to ice guy herself if things get too unbearable, as that is better than enduring mistreatment. Jun gets angry, stating that it's not fair for Shiori to ask her to get a cell phone in exchange for teaching her to ice guy herself. Jun confesses that if she could get another cell phone, she wouldn't even need Shiori's help at all. At this moment, Hibiki watches in annoyance as Shiori interacts with Jun. Shiori seems to have changed from who she was when she was in middle school. Hibiki reminds Shiori of how she used to be when they first met, describing her as a very kind girl that everyone liked. He expresses confusion about why she has become so insensitive and cold. Shiori lets Hibiki finish speaking and then threatens him to leave, or she'll cut his tongue with the knife. While she does so, Shin interrupts them, laughing at how the student council president acts. Shin then offers the cell phone that was confiscated by Wudo in exchange for one of the girls turning Hibiki into a man. Hibiki initially refuses, but Shiori looks at him with annoyance, seeing him as just like all the other men, easily controlled by lust. However, Jun starts acting sweet and friendly with Hibiki, buttering him up in an act to manipulate him, trying to seduce him so that he won't harm her. Jun promises that after having her first time with her boyfriend, she will come back for Hibiki. Despite being happy that Jun approached him, Hibiki refuses, 
saying he will return the cell phone for nothing, as it is her property anyway. Hibiki wishes he would get to be with Jun even though he would highly prefer Shiori. Jun is basically coming on to him. Shin approaches Hibiki and Jun while laughing at the spectacle and explains that he did not expect Jun to pretend to be a good girl. Shin praises Jun for her ability to survive with as much effort she puts into the quality of her performance. But Shin doesn't buy her acts because he has done his research on Jun and knows everything about her life after he investigated her. Shin found that Jun was obsessed with an idol group and had the luck to meet with one member of the group. Jun and the idol would constantly meet until they fell in love. Jun would spend money on this man, money she had to steal from her parents. However, Jun later found out that the man was not an actual member of her favorite idol group. But because she was in love with him, she started working for him, deceiving other fans of the idol group and scamming them. When Jun's parents found out, they used their influence to keep her out of jail and sent her to the academy instead. Jun accuses Shin of defaming her, and Shin laughs at her, confessing that he has been observing her behavior. Jun becomes defensive and tries to attack Shin, but Shiori then decides that Jun is no longer needed, blocks her attack, and forces her out of the room. After Jun leaves, Shiori tries to forcibly take the phone Shin has, but Shin reveals that it's a fake phone and suggests that Shiori consider his initial proposal to get the real one. Hibiki still doesn't feel right about taking advantage of Shiori and tries to voice his opinion but both Shiori and Shin shut him up. After giving it a quick thought, Shiori agrees to Shin's terms. Before leaving, Shin gives Hibiki protection to bring evidence of what he needs to do later. However, Hibiki begins to have a moral debate with himself, thinking that this situation is not right. Hibiki wanted the reunion with Shiori to be joyous, but it's not, and it's at a place like the prison they're in. When Hibiki finally decides to tell Shiori that he won't take advantage of her, Shiori has already prepared everything for her part of the deal and makes Hibiki start the initiation by feeling up her plot. Hibiki thinks about how he can't explain what he's feeling at that moment, finding it incredible and thinking he now understands all the truths of nature. Hibiki is glad he didn't die, but suddenly his illusion shatters when Shiori tries to kiss him. However, she can't bring herself to and feels repulsed, and she gags. Shiori tries not to give up on this and tries again and again but she cannot make it through until she tries even harder and finally kisses Hibiki but vomits in his mouth, causing nausea for both of them. Hibiki asks Shiori not to continue, stating that he is not so cruel as to force her to do something she doesn't want, and finds repulsive. Shiori looks surprised and talks with Hibiki, who is happy that Shiori remembers him. However, Shiori questions this happiness, saying he shouldn't be glad to be in this place. Shiori asks to try again, promising it won't be the same as last time when she vomited when Hibiki got close to her. Hibiki cries out his concern for Shiori and her condition, as she would force herself to endure this humiliation for a phone. Hibiki is not a cruel person and doesn't want Shiori to continue. Hibiki, regretting everything Shiori had to go through, promises to help her escape and get her the phone she so desperately needs. As Hibiki promises this to Shiori, he touches her shoulders, which causes Shiori to vomit again and confess she no longer trusts anyone. In an act of good faith, Hibiki promises to get evidence for Shin who has been waiting outside by the door since so that Shin can let them go. After Hibiki manages to get the evidence for Shin, Shiori realizes that even though Hibiki is just as bad as her for ending up in the facility for people with internet addiction, Hibiki isn't an entirely bad person. Shiori shows gratitude towards Hibiki by offering to help him if anyone ever bullies him. She offers to help him during those times, leaving Hibiki hopeful that he and Shiori may eventually become close friends. Shiori leaves the room, meeting Shin outside. She takes the phone from Shin, and this is witnessed by Wudo. Wudo gets angry because Shin deceived him into giving up the phone to ultimately give it to Shiori. Wudo wants to teach Shin a lesson for what he did, and this delights his underlings. Shin enters the room where Hibiki is dancing happily, showing Shin the evidence that he acquired from his mission. However, Hibiki voices his worry that Shin is using women as objects, which is something Hibiki doesn't wish to continue doing. But Shin grabs him by the neck and pins him against the wall, scolding him for thinking that he has a say in any of it. Shin reiterates that Hibiki is merely his dog and for Hibiki to be able to get treats like the one that he just had, referring to Shiori, Hibiki must refer to Shin as master. Hibiki breaks away from the hold and refuses to be Shin's dog and refuses to address him as master, which further angers Shin. Hibiki is also angry because he doesn't want to be anyone's dog just for having been helped not Ice Guy himself. He doesn't want to deal with Shin any longer and storms out of the room to navigate the facility on his own without the help of Shin. As Hibiki makes his way to the courtyard, other students tease him for being Shin's dog. But Hibiki's mind is not there. His only goal is to figure out how to escape from this place with Shiori, who is the only person he cares about at this moment. Before Hibiki comes up with a plan, he decides to visit his dorm room and see what's going on there. 
When Hibiki gets there, before entering, a man interrupts to greet him, urging him to hurry inside for a welcome from his roommates. Inside the dorm room, the man introduces himself as Bin, saying they are like brothers in room 420. Bin reveals himself as the superintendent and introduces the other roommates, Kaio, Rai, and To. The superintendent gathers everyone for a group photo, in which Hibiki also participates. However, immediately after Bin leaves, the roommate's attitude changes drastically towards Hibiki. Hibiki becomes worried when the roommates instruct him to fetch food for them while they organize their things, implying that they want Hibiki to buy them food. Exiting the room, Hibiki wonders if the roommates are harassing him or not, not having had experienced this himself. Nonetheless, Hibiki goes to the dining hall. In the dining hall, everything seems pleasant with other students eating as well, but then it turns strange. To order food that is pleasant, more appealing, and appetizing, Hibiki discovers that he needs tickets to exchange, and lacking the tickets means that he needs to get the free food, which is less than appetizing. Hibiki settles for the free kitchen, complaining about the small portions as well. Hibiki observes that everyone is eating the same free food, as apparently, the food tickets are too expensive to obtain. However, Hibiki is surprised to see Shin eating the paid food. Shin invites Hibiki to join him but only as his dog, which Hibiki refuses and leaves to bring the food he got back to his roommates in room 420. The roommates get angry seeing the free food on their plates, surprised that Hibiki already eaten his share. The roommates can no longer stand this food and had hoped that Hibiki would buy them good food. The roommates give Hibiki their food, which he accepts and finishes. The roommates are surprised by this, and Hibiki explains that he hadn't eaten since the previous day while he was gaming before he was brought to the academy. The roommates don't really care for that, though. They only care about what Hibiki is going to buy for their feast. When Hibiki fails to understand what they mean, they explain that Hibiki, as Shin's subordinate, should treat them to better food. Angry, Hibiki reveals he's not Shin's subordinate. The roommates get angry at him, feeling as if he betrayed them for not being Shin's dog. They confess that the only reason they threw him a small welcome party is that Bin told them that Hibiki was with Shin. The roommates try to gang up on Shin to start a fight with him, but neither of them can bring themselves to hit him first. All they remember is their gaming camaraderie, which was only done through clicking their keyboards extraordinarily fast. The roommates try again to rush Hibiki, but Hibiki shields himself by putting out his hands in a repelling motion, causing the roommates to get knocked to the floor. When Hibiki opens his eyes, he finds that the boys are all on the floor and starts thinking that since he didn't really do anything, he must have some kind of superpowers. But after attempting to use his newfound non-existent superpowers to punch the wall and break out of the place with Shiori, Hibiki realizes that he doesn't have superpowers and that punching a wall is no joke but painful. The roommates get up and try to rush Hibiki again, and Hibiki does what he did the first time. He realizes that the boys are very weak because of malnutrition and fake being healthy by wearing makeup. Kaio confesses their actions were on Bin's orders, who makes them pay for protection and starves them. The roommates plead for food, and Hibiki promises to talk to Bin about his exploitation, an idea the roommates oppose. In Bin's office, Hibiki finds Bin playing video games. Bin demands food from Hibiki because Hibiki came to his office for no reason. Hibiki explains that he wants Bin to stop exploiting the roommates, but Bin pretends that he doesn't know what Hibiki is talking about. Hibiki tries to ask Bin about playing a game in an academy that seeks to cure that, but Bin doesn't appreciate this because he's not a student at the academy and can do what he wants. Hibiki continues to explain that the roommates have also confessed that Bin confiscates their stuff even though Bin is the one who said they are family. Hibiki questions Bin's treatment of his roommates, leading to Bin's denial and anger, threatening Hibiki to mind his business if he doesn't want a fate that's worse than death. Bin reminds Hibiki to hurry to the courtyard for a class that's about to start, warning of punishment if he's late for the class. Hibiki hurries there and barely makes it in time. He expresses happiness about the class being sports. Kaio corrects him, stating that this is not a normal school, they train like military personnel. Cheyenne arrives, explaining the rules for the newcomers. Breaking the rules results in punishment, while obedience brings benefits. During training, Hibiki thinks he can endure it, standing out and perhaps get a reward instead of a punishment. However, his smile fades as he watches his classmates being punished when they run out of energy and fall to the ground. Shyan severely punishes the students who can't perform up to his standard, which devastates Hibiki. Unable to bear Shyan hitting them, Hibiki demands Shyan to stop, trying to protect the students and stand up for them, but only receives a punch to the face from Shyan when Shyan realizes that Hibiki is talking back to him, a violation of the rules they must all follow. Shyan questions Hibiki's newfound leadership that he alone established and tries to play the hero and hits him again. Tired of accepting something he deems cruel, Hibiki fights back, surprising everyone. Seeing Shyan bleed from the punch he gave him, Hibiki apologizes as he didn't intend the punch and confesses that he doesn't think violence is okay. Hibiki asks Shyan to stop being violent since he can't stand it, 
but the instructor only thinks about hitting him with all his strength as he raises his fist to lay a punch on Hibiki. This leads Hibiki to express a desire to be clapped to death, arguing that Cheyenne's current approach is not corrective. Cheyenne laughs at him, warning that he won't tolerate disrespect just because he's Shin's lackey. Hibiki asserts that it has nothing to do with Shin because he isn't Shin's dog anyway. He questions the absurdity of the school's environment. He then challenges the training intensity without proper sustenance to give the students the proper energy and stamina to endure this intense training. Hibiki mentions laws protecting minors, threatening to report any violence to the police if Cheyenne tries to use violence against him again. Cheyenne dismisses what Hibiki said, asserting his authority as the law in the school with no one ever going to come and save him, delivering another blow. Hibiki refuses to submit to Cheyenne's authority, urging his classmates to join his protest as they also know that this is absurd. However, Hibiki's classmates, seeing the severity of Cheyenne's violence against anyone daring to speak out against him, pledge allegiance to the instructor, leaving Hibiki isolated. Cheyenne demands an apology from Hibiki for what he just did. But Hibiki refuses to heed because no matter what they do to him, he will never accept to be in the wrong when Cheyenne is the one in the wrong. Shiori intervenes, violently forcing Hibiki to apologize. Shiori apologizes to Cheyenne as the student council president, taking responsibility for what Hibiki did and promising that it won't happen again. Hibiki doesn't understand Shiori's actions. Shiori warns him against playing the hero, emphasizing the instructor's brutality and training. Despite her efforts, Hibiki refuses to apologize, questioning the consequences if someone ever gets ice guide in the hands of this brutality. Shiori tries to reason with him, but he pushes her out of the way, causing her to trip and drop her phone. Shiori attempts to recover the phone before anyone sees it, but Jun and her friends stop her in time. Cheyenne, angered by the situation, seizes Shiori's phone. Wudo comes out when he sees this, interested in the punishment of Shiori who humiliated him earlier. Wudo informs Shiori of rule-breaking consequences, expressing disappointment, and Cheyenne orders punishment for Hibiki's classmates until Hibiki repents. Hibiki protests, claiming it's not their fault because evil is evil and good is good no matter the justifications, but the punishment persists on the classmates. Cheyenne orders the girls in Shiori's class to line up and slap Shiori if they think she is wrong. A girl hesitates but follows Cheyenne's orders to avoid punishment herself. Witnessing the brutality, Hibiki emotionally breaks, begging the instructor to stop the punishment. Cheyenne orders the instructors to cease the punishment, and the students express disdain for Hibiki, telling him to ice guy himself without involving others if that's what he wants. Jun and Wudo inform Shiori that she can no longer be the student council president because of what she has done. Unfazed, Shiori ignores them. After everyone has left for their rooms, in a torrential rain, Hibiki apologizes to Shiori for involving her in his own punishment while on his knees. Shiori calls him useless and instructs him never to speak to her again. Frustrated, Hibiki watches as Shin approaches, mocking him for being a loser and ruining his chance with Shiori by getting her caught with a phone. Hibiki pleads to be Shin's dog again, but Shin refuses, stating it would tarnish his reputation if he let someone like Hibiki come in and out of his circle. However, Shin offers three conditions if Hibiki is serious about joining him. Hibiki must become his class leader, he must replace Wudo as a disciplinary officer, and he must fulfill the final undisclosed condition for a chance to ascend in the school. Hibiki questions Shin about his true intentions, and Shin replies that fulfilling his objectives will reveal them. Meanwhile, Cheyenne is in the director's office, questioned about the courtyard disturbance. Cheyenne downplays it, and Jean sends him to the workshop class where Ryo is waiting. In another scene, Hibiki's roommates are scolded by another boy in Hibiki's class for letting him escape. The boy wants the roommates to punish Hibiki further because of the punishment Hibiki made them endure earlier for no reason at all. The roommates are threatened with hospitalization if they don't beat up Hibiki, which scares them because they don't know what to do. At that moment, Hibiki bursts into the room, shouting that he's the new leader of class 4. The students all laugh, calling Hibiki a moron for being a newcomer and saying such silly things. But, Hibiki pulls out some delicious food from his bag and shares it with his classmates. He promises even better meals if they choose him as their leader. The classmates quickly change their minds about Hibiki and pledge loyalty, agreeing to gather the entire class and convince them to accept Hibiki as their leader. Now, for the next challenge, facing off with Wudo. So, Hibiki quickly heads to Wudo's room to assert his leadership. Hibiki gives Wudo a good smack on the face, claiming ownership of the school, and challenges him to a fight. Hibiki starts running, leading Wudo and his followers on a wild chase. Hibiki plans to separate Wudo's followers and defeat them one by one, remembering his own strengths that he can use to his advantage and leaving Wudo to be the last one standing. That way, he can take him out without any interruptions. After a long chase, some of Wudo's underlings catch up, but Hibiki defeats them. Wudo sends another bunch of his remaining buddies to fight Hibiki, but Hibiki is a clever one. 
He set up traps for them to fall into, saving his energy. Now, Wudo is all alone and chases after Hibiki. As Hibiki checks the time, he sees it's almost curfew. He hurries into the building, and Wudo follows right behind. Inside, just as curfew hits, Bin, who was waiting around, closes the door, leaving Wudo's friends outside to sleep. Bin leaves the scene, not caring if Wudo and Hibiki end up in a fight. Wudo, all alone now, thinks he can take on Hibiki because he doesn't look very strong. But Hibiki isn't alone, his whole class is with him. Class 4 gives Wudo a good beating, and Hibiki watches, finding it amusing. Hibiki is all about justice now, seeking revenge on those who wronged him. Meanwhile, Cheyenne meets with Ryo as instructed by Jean. Ryo asks about the confiscated phone, offering to handle it himself. Cheyenne hands over the phone, and the next day, Hibiki presents Cheyenne with confiscated phones from Wudo. Hibiki makes up a story about how he saw the error of his ways, sought advice from Wudo, and found the phones in his room. Hibiki apologizes, asking for punishment for breaking the rules on behalf of Class 4. Cheyenne beats up Wudo and assigns a week in the dungeon for interrogation. Cheyenne even commends Hibiki's change of heart, seeking his support with the classmates. In the next scene, a family brings back their unreformed son named Moku to the director's office where Cheyenne is also present. They want him committed again for more re-education. Jean assures the transformation of Moku if the parents support the school financially, and they quickly agree, desperately wanting to help their son. After they leave, Jean scolds Cheyenne for not handling the former student firmly the first time. Cheyenne apologizes, but the director decides Cheyenne needs corrective action, so Jean enjoys whipping Cheyenne's back as punishment. Meanwhile, Ryo sneaks a peek and finds Cheyenne being punished which delights him. He takes this opportunity to visit Wudo in his cell. Wudo begs Ryo to let him out, admitting that Hibiki deceived him. Ryo acts indifferent, trying not to get involved. Wudo pleads, pointing out Ryo's benefit from the phone business. Ryo acknowledges it, then asks about what Wudo did to Jun. After Wudo spills the beans, Ryo starts beating him, demanding to know where the phone is. Wudo spills the beans, revealing Shin stole it and gave it to Shiori, who dropped it and got confiscated. Ryo thanks him and lets his men beat Wudo as he leaves. Ryo contemplates Cheyenne's deception, realizing the phone Cheyenne gave him was fake. He vows to make Cheyenne pay. The scene shifts to Hibiki telling Shin about his efforts as they head to the rooftop. Shin congratulates him, acknowledging him as an accomplice to an operation Shin wants to start. Shin takes Hibiki to his room at the rooftop, now the headquarters for operations. Hibiki is surprised by the room's contents and is offered to live there. Hibiki wants to know Shin's true self, but Shin evades the question. Shin offers a drink to celebrate Wudo's defeat, revealing it as a test which Hibiki passed well. Shin now wants to teach Hibiki the school's rules, asking if he noticed anything about the previous night when he fought Wudo. Hibiki realizes none of the instructors did anything to stop the fight, and Shin reveals it's because the instructors were aware of it. They help students smuggle phones inside the school. The school is very secluded, so it's the instructors themselves who are helping. Next, Shin discloses the next target, Class 6, where the leader named Yo is another phone smuggler. Hibiki questions the prevalence of smugglers, but Shin asserts that backing down is no longer an option. He instructs Hibiki to expose all phone smugglers for Cheyenne's recognition. Hibiki reluctantly agrees because he wants to give a phone to Shiori. He reveals that he managed to smuggle a phone and wants to give it to Shiori immediately. However, Shin tells him that even if he gives Shiori a phone now, she won't acknowledge him yet because he was a loser just the previous day. If Hibiki wants to impress Shiori and be at the top, he has to do it right and defeat every smuggler. Hibiki accepts the challenge, following Shin's advice to maintain superiority. Hibiki goes to his room to rally up his followers, so they can get ready to fight with Class 6 and expose them to Cheyenne but his followers disappoint him. They don't want to fight anyone. The only reason they fought with Wudo was that Wudo bullied them as well. Now they don't want to continue fighting so they can leave after a year. Hibiki is utterly disappointed with them and tells them that he doesn't want to be their leader anymore, storming out. Shin, back at his room, contemplates unlocking Jun's phone which he had kept since taking it from Wudo, when instructor Ryo suddenly arrives. Ryo interrogates Shin about Jun's phone, pinning him to the floor. Shin warns of consequences if Ryo claps him. Ryo, undeterred, repeats the question. Shin stays silent, and Shin's bodyguard, Ban, hits Ryo from behind. Shin gets up and reveals to Ryo that the bodyguard is authorized by the director and claims that his disobedient dog took Jun's phone with it. Ryo cannot do anything at that moment because he knows he would get in trouble if he went any further. In the next scene, Hibiki arrives at the location Shin had told him to go earlier to meet some students from Class 6. Initially seeing no one, Hibiki believes he might have mistaken the place. However, suddenly, a group of guys appears and starts threatening him, telling him that if they defeat Hibiki, they'll take control of Class 4. Despite the threat, Hibiki warns them not to bother or he'll beat them up. The guys, surrounding him, believe they have the upper hand as there are many of them and only one of Hibiki. 
However, realizing it's almost noon, Hibiki starts hitting himself, surprising the guys who eventually cheer him up for doing their job for them. Meanwhile, Akane, a girl who approached Shiori to form an alliance with her, offers Shiori a chance to join them in exchange for using the internet and phones when needed. She entices Shiori by mentioning her younger brother, Shu who's in the hospital and reveals accessing Shiori's information in the school database and police records. Shiori, annoyed, assumes Akane is just some hacker and declines the offer, leaving. Akane shows Shiori that she has located several phones in the school with her device, suggesting they work together and Shiori ends up accepting the offer. Hibiki, on the other hand, continues yelling and hitting himself. He declares that cell phone usage is against the rules and says that he refuses to betray instructor Shion, making the others realize it's a trap. When they realize this, they try to escape, but they are too late, as Shion arrives, having witnessed the latter part of the trap and assuming that Hibiki was beaten by the other students. Shion punishes the students by sending Khan their leader, to the dungeon for three days and the rest to go without dinner for that day. Seeing the other's concerns, Hibiki confesses he has no issues with them and reveals that some individuals do misdeeds in school because they're trying to survive and get harmed. Hibiki invites them to dinner if they decide to join him, and they accept, pleading for food. After making acquaintance with the other students, Hibiki discovers where Class 6 does business, finding discrepancies with Shin's information. The others warn Hibiki not to mess with Class 6, emphasizing Yo's strength and the instructor's severity, worse than Shion. The other students mention a rumor that someone exposed Hibiki's location, and Hibiki suspects that they were tipped off by Shin. Shiori approaches with Akane and another girl named Hoku, but before Hibiki can talk to Shiori, Akane unexpectedly hugs him because of love at first sight. Hoku interrupts, demanding the phones Hibiki got from Wudo. Threatening violence, Hoku's demand is met with disbelief, but Akane proposes a deal. Hibiki hands over the phones to join their group. Impatient, Hoku defeats Hibiki's companions, demanding the phones. However, Hibiki insists on talking to Shiori, claiming he got a phone for her. Shiori asserts she never asked for it, but as she's now part of Akane's group, he must surrender the device. However, Shin unexpectedly appears, scolding the girls for bothering his dog. Shiori is relieved to finally settle the score with Shin, who had given her a broken phone. However, Shin informs her that no cell phones have a signal due to the school blocking them, and the internet requires a password. Shin tells the girls to join him if they want protection because he's the strongest guy in school, but they flat out refuse and berate Hibiki for being an obedient dog to Shin. Despite his warning, Hoku attacks Hibiki. Shin orders Hibiki to run, and the girls pursue, falling into Shin's trap with Yo in the men's bathroom. When the girls enter, they get sprayed with water by Yo, who is standing side by side with Shin. Hoku tries to attack, and Yo defends himself, leaving her on the ground. Shiori, attempting to protect Hoku, also gets beaten by Yo. Hibiki intervenes when Yo wants to dish out another blow to Shiori, questioning Shin's actions. Shin explains he didn't want to harm the girls but was left with no choice. He introduces Yo, the class 6 leader, and banned from class 20. Hibiki is confused but realizes Yo allied with them because he overheard they were after him. Shin scolds Hibiki for abandoning the mission to have fun with the girls, disappointing him. But Shin gives Hibiki another chance to redeem himself by taking explicit photos of the girls for Shin to use against them if they ever try to attack him. Hibiki reluctantly agrees to take compromising photos of the girls because he doesn't want to be an enemy to Shin. Hibiki, however, has a condition that Shin should spare the girls if he takes the photos, but Shin doesn't appreciate a mere dog telling him how to do what he does, yet he humors him. Shin dismisses concerns for the girls and demands a quick photo. Hibiki starts doing what he needs to do and signals Akane, and they prepare for the photo. Hibiki uses Shiori's jacket to throw at Ban's eyes to distract Shin and the other guys. The distraction allows Akane and Hoku to escape, but Shiori is too slow and doesn't manage to escape and gets caught. Shin mocks Hibiki and blames him for Shiori's missed opportunity, telling Shiori to blame Hibiki for whatever happens, claiming Shiori is now under his control due to Hibiki's actions. Hibiki confronts Shin, stating it's his problem, not Shiori's. Shin laughs, mocking Hibiki's inability to defend a woman, and reveals his manipulative intentions from the beginning. Shin orders his followers to take Hibiki away. However, Bin enters the bathroom at that moment, questioning the situation. Ryo arrives as well, dismissing any issue and asking to speak with Hibiki since he heard that Hibiki was looking for him. Hibiki states his business with the instructor and complains to Ryo about Shin inciting fights, but Ryo accuses Hibiki of smuggling phones instead, dismissing the complaints. Hibiki tries to refuse, confused, but Ryo finds a phone in his pocket. Shin informs Hibiki that Ryo is in charge of Class 6 which reveals that Ryo has always been in on everything that happens in Class 6 to Hibiki. Ryo accuses Hibiki of using girls to scam classmates and sentences him to two weeks in solitary confinement. 
Shiori, Akane, and Hoku receive additional punishments as well for being accomplices in Hibiki's supposed scheme. In the cell, Hibiki thinks about Shiori's request to never see her again, and endures ridicule from others for being Shin's dog. Hibiki recalls his troubled past and vows not to trust anyone again after this brutal betrayal. The scene shifts, showing Shin severely ill with blood coming from his mouth while Ban gets him some water. Ryo interrupts him, unconcerned about his condition. The story jumps seven years back, where Cheyenne was an officer who was caught in an ambush with his teammates who ultimately lost their lives and left him as the sole survivor. Cheyenne felt guilty for the deaths and wanted to repent. He met Jean who was the daughter of one of his teammates, Kai, and she helped him join the academy so that he could repent properly and help youths. In the present, Cheyenne oversees instructor's work questioning his purpose there and if he's even repenting. Ryo advises him to be stricter due to the chaos caused by Shin and Hibiki. Shion visits Hibiki's cell, finding him exercising. Meanwhile, Shiori and her friends continue their punishment as well. Shiori urges them not to cause more trouble so that they can all quickly leave the place. Akane reveals a way to communicate with her brother, and Shiori is interested. But first, they have to get back the phone that they had that Shin managed to take from them. After two weeks, Hibiki's punishment ends, and one of the instructors notices his changed attitude. The scene shifts to Akane evading some boys trying to catch her while she's outside trying to catch some air, and ditching her chores. Akane encounters Moku who is also avoiding others because he gets bullet a lot. Akane requests resistance from Moku, but Moku remains indifferent as he knows that resisting won't help him at all. As the boys approach Akane and Moku, Hibiki intervenes, defeating the boys easily by attacking their weakest points in their bodies. The group retreats, unable to defeat Hibiki at that moment. Akane, grateful for his help, offers to treat Hibiki's injuries in the warehouse, knowing very well that it's a trick. However, Hoku and Shiori catch Akane and Hibiki in a compromising situation. Later, in the courtyard, Hibiki interrupts Shion and offers his apologies for the way he behaved before he went into solitary confinement. Hibiki offers to repent in front of his whole class, and Shion lets him do it. Hibiki apologizes to the class, expressing remorse and seeking a second chance. Touched by his sincerity, Shion expresses his trust in Hibiki. Later, instructor Cho asks for the new student's help in practicing kung fu with the girls. Shion agrees and selects participants for the combat, but his team faces defeat almost instantly, having been defeated by the girls. Displeased, Shion questions his team, and only Hibiki volunteers for the next fight. Everyone is surprised, especially Hoku, who recalls Hibiki offering teamwork as a test of trust. Hibiki approaches Hoku amicably before the fight, but it's a trap. He tricks her into lowering her guard by touching her plot and attacks, infuriating Hoku. Cho informs Shion that Hoku is the strongest among his girls, suggesting they find a stretcher for the protagonist because he thinks Hoku will win and Hibiki will lose. Shion dismisses Cho's concern. Spectators agree that Hibiki deserves a beating for using underhanded techniques to lower Hoku's guard. One of Hoku's friends notices that Hibiki is leading Hoku into a trap. Hibiki takes continuous blows from Hoku, waiting for the right moment to strike. Eventually, Hibiki finds an opening and applies a wrestling hold, forcing Hoku to surrender. The unexpected victory leaves everyone speechless. Hoku's friends get angry at Hibiki for fighting dirty, and Hoku intervenes to prevent them from hitting him and takes the loss. Instructor Cho questions Hibiki's fighting style, prompting Shion to defend Hibiki, stating that Hibiki is a new student who hasn't trained in kung fu or any hand-to-hand -hand combat. Shion suggests that if Cho disagrees with the result, they should fight each other to set an example for the students. Cho refuses, acknowledging Shion's superior combat skills. Ryo, with his class, comes after seeing that the students from class 4 were celebrating a victory against the girls' class. Ryo suggests a fight between classes 6 and 4, as Yo had previously requested because Ryo also believes that class 4 seconds victory against a bunch of girls isn't really a victory. Shion rejects the idea, not wanting to pit Yo, an experienced fighter, against a novice. Ryo opposes Shion suddenly, completely complaining about Jean's support for him. Hibiki laments almost earning Shion's trust before the change and decides to challenge Yo for Shion's approval. Hibiki seeks permission for a challenge, confusing onlookers. Shion wants to refuse this but Ryo forces his hand and Shion grants permission to Hibiki to challenge Yo. Before the fight, Hibiki tells Ryo about his lack of combat training, only having essential training from Shion's class. Hibiki requests that the challenge be a standing attention challenge. Yo laughs and accepts the challenge, promising to defeat Hibiki regardless of tricks. Shion explains the rules and positions for the face-off. The challenge begins, and spectators eagerly await the outcome. After an hour of motionless confrontation between the two, the audience wonders how much longer they can endure. 
Hibiki, feeling fatigue, is determined not to lose, needing Cheyenne's trust more desperately and preparing for a future encounter with Shin. Yo and Ryo start worrying, considering the possibility of Hibiki winning. After three hours, Ryo agrees to Cheyenne's proposal, calling off the challenge in a draw, wanting to end the match before anyone collapses. Cheyenne sends Hibiki to rest and instructs the rest of the class to continue training. Moku offers to accompany Hibiki to his room, and Cheyenne accepts. Moku praises Hibiki for his strength and wits during the escort, but Hibiki is discontent, having wanted to win the endurance duel and being surprised by Yo's strength and endurance. Hibiki tells Moku that this is not over yet and orders him to bring a bucket of cold water and another with hot water. Moku returns with the buckets, and behind him, Yo arrives with his subordinate, ready to have another confrontation. Hibiki immediately throws the bucket of cold water at Yo who gets angry. Hibiki apologizes, pretending that Yo got wet by mistake as Hibiki was just throwing the water at the same time that Yo was walking into the room. But then, Hibiki throws the bucket of hot water at Yo intentionally, causing Yo to cramp up. With his opponent now immobilized, Hibiki delivers a final blow to Yo. Meanwhile, another student called Mei and his friends walk through the halls intending to talk to Yo and express their loyalty to him for protection, only to find Hibiki humiliating Yo. Despite this, Mei reaffirms his and his group's loyalty to Yo and prepares to attack Hibiki, who is being held back by Yo's subordinate. Unexpectedly, Moku manages to free Hibiki from Yo's subordinate when he explodes in anger, fed up with being messed with. Now free, Hibiki tells Mei and his group that they have one last chance to stop being Yo's dogs and join him. Mei disagrees and tries to convince his companions not to abandon Yo. However, Mei's friend pushes him aside and asks Hibiki how a rookie class will oppose guys like Yo. Hibiki picks up a stick, warning Yo that anyone who challenges or mocks him will regret it. While thinking that Shin will be next, Hibiki hits Yo with the stick. Later, Hibiki passes out due to exhaustion and has a dream. He relives a memory of winning a relay competition in middle school with Shiori. Hibiki sees a lot of blood around him with many students collapsed on the floor. He questions if he is responsible for it. Shiori approaches him with a smile, trying to get him back to the classroom. However, Hibiki sees his current self, standing near him, and demands his old self to stop hiding who he truly is. Hibiki gets scared of his current self as he isn't the person that his current self is saying he is. Finally, Hibiki wakes up, being cared for by Moku and the other students. The class 4 students apologize for mistreating Hibiki and beg for mercy. Mei, however, refuses to apologize but states that he will still follow Hibiki's orders. Hibiki is not impressed by the student's change of heart and questions whether he should accept them. Amid criticism from one of the students, Hibiki wonders if those who oppose him are issuing a challenge to him, causing panic among all the students. This quickly gets resolved as none of the students want to go against Hibiki. Later, Hibiki reflects that before everyone wanted to win Shin's favor, and now that Hibiki has defeated Yo, they prefer to ask him for help rather than beat him when he is defenseless. Hibiki believes that the students may have stopped fearing Shin. He finds it odd that no one talks about Shin anymore, but Yo's name is on everyone's lips since Yo has been defeated and sent to the hospital. Hibiki thinks Shin had put Yo in charge to manage everything while he controls all of it from the shadows. Remembering everything under Shin's command, Hibiki wonders what Shin is plotting. Hibiki then asks his companions if they know anything about Shin lately, and they say they haven't seen him, and he hasn't caused any trouble since the last time Hibiki saw him. Before leaving, Hibiki confesses that if they decide to seek his protection, he will accept them as brothers, but if anyone messes with Moku, they will regret it. In the next scene, Hayo informs Yui, Shin's older brother, about what's been happening lately at the school. Yui is concerned about the rebellion at the school and asks Hayo to watch Shin because he never knows what Shin is planning. Meanwhile, at school, Akane and the girls take Yo's subordinate's phone, who threatens to tell Ryo, but Hoku warns him that he'll end up in the hospital with Yo if he ever speaks. Now at the principal's office, Hayo questions how Cheyenne deals with problems. Dissatisfied with his performance, Hayo starts hitting Cheyenne. But Jean disagrees with punishing Cheyenne, saying that student fights are normal in every school, and that Cheyenne doesn't deserve this. Upon hearing this, Ryo tells Hayo that he personally took care of alerting the head instructor about the situation. Ryo says that due to Cheyenne's actions, the school starts deteriorating as Cheyenne ignored everything he was told by Hayo. Hayo hits Cheyenne again and threatens to fire him, even with Jean on his side. Jean asks Hayo to stop blaming Cheyenne since he was the one who forced them to accept Shin into the school. She reminds him that she is the director and doesn't want him bringing their issues to the school. They won't have any problems if he follows her instructions. Hayo starts laughing and admits to being surprised by her attitude, leaving the students under her supervision. Hayo tells Cheyenne to take a break while he takes care of the students as his replacement. Hayo leaves with Ryo as his companion. Outside the office, Ryo thanks Hayo for dealing with Cheyenne 
who is clearly causing problems for his little schemes. Ryo takes the opportunity to inform Hayo about the events caused by Hibiki, recommending that they deal with him. However, Hayo is only interested in Jun's phone. Since Ryo doesn't have it, Hayo threatens to reveal that Ryo nearly clapped Wudo and asks where Shin is. Ryo replies that he doesn't know about Shin since the last time he saw him was in his room with his bodyguard Ban, who also disappeared. Hayo doesn't believe Ryo and demands the truth with all the details. We shift to Shiori and the girls attempting to use the stolen phone. Akane explains that since the phone is connected to the school's network, it can only access some pages but can't make calls or send messages. This angers Shiori, reminding Akane that she promised to help her call her brother. Akane replies that normally they wouldn't do anything. But since they are dealing with a genius, referring to herself, they need to retrieve the device she used to create her own network before making calls and using the internet. Shiori is not pleased with the answer since it might take longer to talk to her brother but decides to wait a bit longer. Shiori asks if the girls have seen Shin since he's suspiciously hiding. Neither of them has seen Shin, so Shiori suggests investigating Jun since she had a phone that could make calls. Akane and Hoku agree to investigate but first want to know how Shiori ended up at the school since she is an orphan with a brother in the hospital, who could have sent her to the school. Shiori silently remembers how she stood out from the first day, gaining Shion's favor. However, her uncle Kai, the same man who is Jean's father, kept her under threat for taking care of her and her brother. When Kai got tired of Shiori, he decided to separate her from her brother. Before Shiori can tell her friends anything, Hibiki arrives to inform them that the plans have changed. Shiori decides to leave right at that moment, not wanting anything to do with Hibiki. As she walks away, she thinks that they don't need to know what's really happening with her, or they'll hate her, so she must fix her own issues on her own. Next, we see Hayo talking on the phone with Yui, promising to find Shin. We also discover that Jun is with him, asking for help to get revenge on the other students since they are bothering her too much. Meanwhile, Hibiki and the girls search for Shin, as Hibiki thinks it's the perfect time to attack him without Yo. They reach Shin's room, shouting for him to come out. Hibiki notices the broken lock on the door and worries about what might have happened. Hibiki decides to enter and finds everything inside in disarray. Upon investigating, Hibiki discovers that Shin has been gone for a while, and realizes that Shin has an illness for which he needs daily medication. In the next scene, Shiori is determined to find Jun, but upon entering her room, she finds Jun waiting for her. Jun challenges Shiori, revealing that Shu, her brother, is not in good health. Jun discloses that she discovered Shiori's indefinite confinement and offers a deal if Shiori is willing to do what she's told. Jun will get her out of the school in two days. Later, we see that Hibiki has obtained the cell phones that Shin hid and wonders about his plan. As Jun is talking with Shiori about her past, Shiori recalls her painful past when she lost her father and attended the funeral with her younger brother, Shu. She tries not to show her pain to her younger brother, reassuring him that she and their mother are by his side. A few days later, Shiori finds her mother's fine due to pill. Since they were now without parents, Kai, their father's cousin, offered to be their guardian. Shiori accepted, excited about the prospect of starting a better life. However, over time, her brother ended up in the hospital due to a serious hereditary illness. Kai assured Shiori that she didn't need to worry about expenses. But later, he tried to take advantage of her because he claimed that he was spending too much on her brother's hospital expenses. Shiori got tired of what Kai was doing and decided to clap at him but failed. For this reason, Kai, who knew Ryo, sent her to the re-education school so she could never see her brother again. This past still devastates Shiori so that she doesn't even know whether to take Jun's offer or not. In the next scene, back with Hibiki, we see him under the stars, trying to decipher Shin's plan. Moku approaches him, and Hibiki nervously asks Moku about Shin. Upon discovering that Moku doesn't know anything, he inquires about how Moku managed to escape. Moku reveals that someone with purple hair gave him a map of the drains to escape through, asking in return that Moku publish everything happening inside the school once he's out. Although Moku did it, the information was immediately erased from the internet, causing his parents to send him back to the school. Hibiki was hoping that the purple-haired student would be Shin but with this information, he is uncertain. The next day, Hibiki gives orders to his class at the courtyard, making him appear intimidating to the other students. He tells his classmates that if they start excelling in training, other classes won't mess with them and they will gain Cheyenne's favor, and the class agrees. However, the plan goes awry when it's revealed that Cheyenne is no longer part of the instructors as Hayo approaches with the other instructors. Hayo addresses all the students, explaining that he suspended Cheyenne for not doing his job properly. Hayo informs them that, depending on their behavior, Cheyenne will return soon. Hibiki starts suspecting a connection between Shin's disappearance and Cheyenne's suspension, thinking that Hayo might be behind everything in the school. 
Hayo initiates training, instructing Class 4 to hold the attention position for two hours without breaking ranks. As time passes, Hibiki wonders about Hayo's role as Cheyenne's superior and his relationship with Shin. Suddenly, Moku is the first to faint, causing the entire class to start over. Hayo starts bothering Moku to stand up, as he can't begin training until Moku does. Hibiki intervenes, speaking directly to Hayo, attempting to take responsibility for the previous day's events. Hibiki promises to help the class improve their endurance and asks Hayo to only punish him. Hayo, excited to finally meet Hibiki, gives him the chance to repent. Still, Hibiki refuses to retract his words and accepts whatever punishment awaits. Hayo gives class for a break and takes Hibiki with him to the director's office. In the director's office, Hayo invites Hibiki for coffee and confesses that he now only wants to talk. Hayo reveals that everyone here, including the instructors, talks about Hibiki, considering him part of the top 1%. Hibiki's peers believe he has guts, respecting him for it. Hayo tells him he's more famous in the school than Ryo, Cheyenne, and Yo, making him the new leader after defeating all the favorites. Hayo offers Hibiki the chance to control the entire school alongside Ryo, asking for obedience and assistance in the cell phone business in return. Hibiki stays silent, pondering his response. Hayo suggests he takes his time to think about it and tells him that he wants him to see someone first. Hayo leads Hibiki to the dungeons where he encounters Shoryu, badly beaten, angering Hibiki. Shiori, upon seeing Hibiki, starts crying, attempting to reach him but failing. Hayo then speaks to Hibiki again, offering him Shiori as an ally so that no one can challenge him. Hibiki starts laughing manically in front of Shiori, shouting at her to beg him to let her be his companion. Hibiki then thanks Hayo for teaching him the true meaning of power. Later, Hibiki swears allegiance with Hayo, promising to do whatever is needed without questioning. Hayo is pleased and reveals that he has hopes for him. Now, Hibiki must find a lost cell phone and Hibiki promises to find it soon. Later, in the rain, Hibiki and his team devise a plan to deceive Hayo. Hibiki hands over the cell phone that he has found to his new boss, Hayo, who orders Ryo to take care of Shiori. However, Hibiki asks a personal favor of Hayo to handle Shiori himself, as he has a desire to fulfill since middle school. In the next scene, Hibiki walks on the track, carrying an unconscious Shiori on his back until he collapses from exhaustion. Hibiki starts crying and apologizes to Shiori, attributing all of this chaos to his fault. Still, he asks Shiori to endure a little longer as she can soon leave. Now, let's shift to when Shin was a child, asking his father to send him to the school his brother financed. Although his father disagreed, he accepted upon hearing Shin's promise to return in a year. In the next scene, Shin suspects that his brother, along with Hayo, was involved in his mother's death. Shin had warned his mother of Yui, but his mother dismissed him because Yui was family and there was no need to be afraid of family. But Shin didn't let his hatred for Yui go after his mother's funeral. After a year of living in the school, Shin was ready to return home. Shin complains that the sewers seem like hell, this is where he was hiding for a while. A year has passed quickly for Shin, and after taking a break, he realizes he's run out of medication. He hopes his brother will happily receive the gift that Shin has prepared. Meanwhile, on the surface, Cho trains his class, wondering where Hoku is. The class informs him that she and Akane have been sick since yesterday, and are in bed resting. Hibiki has to inform Ryo that Moku is also ill due to excessive training. Later, Ryo takes Hibiki to present him to everyone as the new council president and disciplinary officer, urging them to work hard to be useful to society again. After, Hibiki has a conversation with Hayo, who gives him a new mission, to find Shin, and promises a reward for success. Hibiki accepts the mission and promises to find Shin. After Hibiki leaves, Ryo warns Hayo about Hibiki's cunning nature, questioning his confidence in him. Hayo dismisses the concerns, stating that Hibiki, once a student everyone took advantage of, has risen to the top and won't waste this chance for power. Hayo also mentions that if Hibiki fails the mission, he will deal with him as he did with Jun. The scene changes, and we see Hibiki's group punishing other students. However, Hibiki arrives and scolds them, reminding them not to act like Yo and Wudo did. Hibiki then apologizes to everyone for causing trouble but requests a non-mandatory favor from them. The students assure Hibiki that they don't need an apology and are ready to support and follow him. Smiling, Hibiki announces that this will be their final training in the school. Subsequently, we see information spreading across the web about the school, addressing internet addiction. People discover that the school is a reform school where students are abused, and even the law is broken. Later, the merchandise Hayo had been waiting for finally arrives at the school, prompting him to inspect it personally. However, he suddenly receives a message asking him never to return. Hayo suspects betrayal by his instructors, detains Ryo, and interrogates him, thinking he may be the traitor. When Ryo is unable to provide answers, Hayo shifts his suspicion to the students, the alumnus. Consequently, Hayo swiftly orders the instructors to cut off power to the entire school and seal it, 
The students are ushered to the courtyard for their training. Hayao regrets not utilizing Jun to prevent this situation but still thinks that he can fix it quickly. Meanwhile, outside the school, journalists gather, awaiting information. Suddenly, Director Jean appears to address their concerns and answer their questions, providing reassurance. In the next scene, Shiori is severely ill being taken care of by Hoku, Akane, and Moku who are not really sick in bed. The three are also revealed to be responsible for spreading the news about the school online. Later, Hibiki intercepts Hayo, inquiring about Jun's cell phone and suggesting that its data may have been leaked, despite Hayo instructing Hibiki to help Ryo take care of the situation. Hibiki questions him further, causing Hayo to become increasingly agitated. When Hayo strikes Hibiki, Hibiki tries to stall him by keeping their fight going, to buy time for his friends to finish what they have started. Cheyenne arrives, demanding Hayo surrender himself, claiming the police are on their way. Hayo dismisses the threat, asserting that they won't be implicated by mere internet rumors. However, Shin comes out of hiding and suddenly sets his room on fire, causing a massive explosion. Surprised by the turn of events, Hayo and Jean can't believe what is happening. Cheyenne rejoices, stating that Hayo's plan is failing and revealing that Hayo cannot escape as long as he, Cheyenne, remains in that place. Cheyenne orders Hibiki to leave, anticipating that he has plans to finish. Hibiki thanks Cheyenne before leaving. Hayo attempts to attack Cheyenne but is easily defeated. Finally, Hibiki manages to free his teammates through the sewers. Instead of joining them in their escape, Hibiki decides to go and search for Shin, who is sitting on the school rooftop as the police approach the school's location. Despite the school's fire, Hibiki reaches Shin, causing him great surprise and bringing tears of happiness to his eyes. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.